it's not about selling one motorcycle. It's about selling the lifestyle of motorcycling. That's when mm -hmm. we win. That's when our customer wins. That's when our teammate wins, is when we have that lifestyle that we get people involved in. Welcome to Conversations with David Ibarra. Today we have as a guest, Vance Harrison, CEO of Motos America. Welcome, Vance. Thanks for having me, David. Well, today I can't wait to talk about, we're going to be talking about motorcycles. <laughs> we're going to be talking about experience. We're going to be talking about a new way to be involved with buying and enjoying a motorcycle. So tell us about Motos America and what made you think of doing what you're about to tell us. Sure, sure. Well, people often ask me what business that we're in. What business is Motors America in? And I tell them, I think, well, motorcycles? No, we're the, in, in the adventure lifestyle business. Adventure lifestyle <laughs> business. <laughs> yeah, sounds pretty good, right? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, sounds yeah. good. So, so what that really means is, you know, we sell, you know, uh, premium European motorcycles. And mm -hmm. the reason I say premium European motorcycles is the typical person that owns one of these is more about the experience of owning it, the experience of riding it, you know, the lifestyle behind it, you know, the leather jacket that, that mm -hmm. looks cool, but also provides protection. And then also the, the, you know, experience that they have in really riding this motorcycle and European is different. Like a European car is different than a domestic car, right? You think European, you think sports, you think racing, you think driving, you know, ultimate driving machine. Well, that's what we sell is the is the European motorcycle. It's an ultimate riding machine. So it's about Perfect. riding it. Now, we're going to back up just a little bit. Tell me what Motos America is. What European bikes does it include? Sure. What was your vision of putting these Euro bikes together under one roof? Sure, sure, absolutely. So, David, I, after 30 years in the car business mm -hmm. and enjoying the car business, and I, I worked through premium uh, brands like Land Rover, BMW, Porsche, and such, I was in the uh, got in the motorcycle business just randomly. You know, BMW motorcycles specifically, mm -hmm. and I liked the brand, and we did a lot. Uh, I wasn't really a rider, but but I became one. And in taking my business practices that I learned in the automotive world and then applying it to the motorcycle world, I really saw so many inefficiencies the way that dealers ran their business. You know, we joined a dealership 20 group in and, and the way back when, so I could learn the business, and I, I quickly realized that we were leading the industry with our business practices and double the rest of the group. And in that, I saw the opportunity a long time ago, you know, that a lot of these owners were, were great people. They were hobbyists. They were motorcyclists, and they thought, why not have a dealership? Well, as we all know, you know, it's a business, not mm -hmm. just a hobby. And so my approach of taking it on as a business really, really paid off. And in Utah, we became a top five dealer in the entire country, even though it wow. rains and snows. Even though we have some else. snow. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so people always ask me how we did that. And I talked about experiences and the riding and the way we do our marketing and the way we take care of our customers and, you know, those types of things that make a big difference inside of a, a, a dealership. So that car principle of running it like a business transformed into the motorcycle industry. So so it's kind of like taking the car business that, frankly, uh, many people that have bought automobiles find it to not be a pleasurable experience, but you taking it and making it all about a pleasurable experience. The buy and then after the yeah. delivery yeah. of the bike. Talk to me yeah. a little bit about that. Well, that's the, that's the key principle, right? So I talked about the car business and I talked about the back end side of the, of, of the car business, the business principles of how we run that, that operation. Mm -hmm. And so really in motorcycles, it's about pre-purchase, a lot of, a lot of, uh, research and deciding what bike makes sense for you, what you want to ride, where you want to go. And then post-purchase is really infinite and mm -hmm. then now you have your bike and you're going to set it up the way you like it. You're going to get your right gear. You're going to get all the accessories. You're going to set up for servicing. You're going to plan on going on these rides. And our goal is to make the purchase the easiest part of that because that should be the easiest, most frictionless part of it. And then your riding is infinite. And I have a saying, it's not about selling one motorcycle. 
It's about selling the lifestyle of motorcycling. That's when mm -hmm. we win. That's when our customer wins. That's when our teammate wins is when we have that lifestyle that we get people involved in. So you bring a theme, a purpose of experience that you're training every single team member that belongs to Motos America from, I understand, coast to coast. Yeah. Tell yeah. us about your locations <laughs> and, uh, and then, uh, talk to me a little bit about how is it that you develop this talent to be enthusiasts, to sell who you are? Sure. Sure. I mean, that's, that's, what's really exciting is we've gone from two dealerships. We started in, in, in Oregon in 2021. And now literally we have 14 stores, literally from o Oregon all the way down to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so literally coast to coast. So, you know, when it's beautiful in, in Oregon and it's hot and muggy in Florida, you can ride up and head up to Oregon or vice versa. And we can ship bikes back and now, forth. You just did a little switch on West coast, East coast. Yeah. Most people use New York <laughs> and California. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have such a, uh, example you could use? We do. We, we What's just, that one? we just, you know, we're, we're excited to be announcing and probably when this podcast hits, it'll be announced <laughs> Good. that we, that we've acquired seven more dealerships that include Brooklyn, New York, which is awesome. Right. Uh, New Orleans, which is wow. really exciting. San Francisco, California, three of them there. And then one of our favorites coming on next month, Santa Monica, California. So that would be one heck of a nice ride. Oh man. Let me tell you, I can't wait. <laughs> Perfect. Now t talk to me about how it is that you're going to get the experience yeah. of Motos America, like fine dining. How are you going to get that achieved at all 14 locations and the further locations that are surely to come? Yeah. Well, the first part of that is selecting teammates and identifying teammates that are, are authentic. We mm -hmm. want real people that are really authentic that are involved in the motorcycle lifestyle. They ride, they get it, they understand. And that's the first step to it is to have that passion behind our teammates. And then we formulate a training program that, that instills the processes that are inside of the dealership around that passion piece to it, but shows right. them the processes to go. And it's uniform across the entire country across every Motors America dealership. And then we roll that out in a platform that they can watch that platform, they can train on it, and it helps them develop themselves personally too. And I'm really excited about that part. Right, so you've created a Motors America Academy. That's, there we go. With all of the curriculum for mm -hmm. every position from selling to servicing to leadership yep. and everything in between. Everything between, and it's, and it's a personalized message too. Yes, you know it's a personalized message, and we even have a, a special uh, chief talent development officer too that really oversees it. Now, who would that be? <laughs> the, the best in the business, David Good. Ibarra. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings, I'm David Ibarra. I'm delighted to share with you my new book, Live Ready Beyond Think and Grow Rich. As one of the largest licensees of Dr. Napoleon Hill's science of success principles. I've taken it upon myself to modernize these principles and to share these principles in my own voice. I promise you, if you read this book and become a disciple of these principles, it will change your life. Order it today on Amazon.com. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I know a little bit about what we were doing, so I was ex really excited, Vance, to have you on the program and to talk to people about enjoying the experience and interaction you have with other human beings that are like you. You often said uh, to me when we were first getting together, we save lives. Tell me about that. You know, it, it's really something that's dear to me, and it's really formed the cause of Motos America. And the cause is to, to better the motorcycle lifestyle for our mm -hmm. teammates and our customers. And, and where that came from in owning car dealerships and also owning motorcycle dealerships, as I started to get more involved in motorcycles, I'd go on these rides with people. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the weekend and the next time they came in, they'd say, thank you. Oh, yeah, sure. No, thank you. You saved my life. 
Mm. And I'd say, well, what do you Powerful. mean? So, well, I, I had this happen, this tragedy, this big life moment happen. And right. getting a motorcycle and going on a ride and you guys organizing and getting me out of this and getting my mind changed and getting my thought process literally saved my life. And it was a powerful moment for me. Right. You know, I never had someone come and say, Hey, thanks for selling me this car and save my life. And we had some fun cars, of course, but you know, nothing that powerful. And that's, that's what I want to steal in our team members and share those stories because they have the same exact stories, David, right. and they get it. And, and to remind them how lucky we are to be in an industry that's based around passion, but also gives so much fulfillment for people. We're so fortunate. You know, I, I was reading an article recently, a few uh, months ago, that said one of the major crises that our country, the United States of America, is experiencing is loneliness. Mm, mm, yeah. Loneliness. Mm. We have almost stopped gathering. We don't know the pers- all the people that live in our neighborhoods. Yeah. We go to a... A restaurant and we stay on our uh, smartphones mm. and don't talk to anyone. And, yeah. and, and it was intriguing the things that you're doing in, yeah. uh, you talked to me about a couple of rides, share uh, with our viewers what that was in uh, Thailand and, <laughs> and other places and, <laughs> and, 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 and what was the experience, how many drivers actually uh, participated sure. in this incredible ride? Sure. Yeah. Well, and, and to, to expand on that, I thought about this of, you know, this smartphone, you know, environment we live in and everyone's stuck on this phone. Well, guess when you can't be stuck on your phone when you're riding a motorcycle, you are <laughs> present in that moment for that next turn coming up for that next straightaway. You're not texting, you're talking, you're doing else. You're focused on it. So I took a group, and I've done a few of these. I'm very fortunate to be able to do this, but I took a group to, uh, to Germany last year actually over July 4th, and we did a, uh, a trip to the Italian Dolomites, which was unbelievable. And we started in Munich, and we went through Austria, and went into, into the Alps, and went over to Italy to the Dolomites and all these ski towns, and it was a, it was a seven-day trip, seven day trip, and uh, we did unbelievable things. We challenged ourselves. We pushed ourselves. It was hot. It was cold. It was just in, incredible meals and waking up early and going to bed late. It was amazing, and that really engaged each one of the people on the trip that they became friends right i've seen lifelong friends that have now that, that, that came from a motorcycle ride and literally communities that have been built around that it's how, really special how, how many uh, individuals were a part of the group sure 14 14, 14 on that right. on that ride. we just and then after that we did a, a ride to, to thailand as and well and how many days yeah, we did seven days, seven days on that trip. And these are not easy days. This isn't mm-hmm. like luxury. This is you're on a motorcycle. You're doing the Stelvio Pass that goes from 2,000 feet to 11,000 feet right. and twists and turns back and forth. And you're thinking to yourself, oh, man, I'm going to fall off this cliff. And, you know, wow, that's a dollar drive. And then all of a sudden you get to the top and you're like, woohoo! I mean, that, that bonds people together, mm-hmm. right? That sense of achievement, you overcome something, that bonds people. Tell me a little bit about the brands that are being uh, put together. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, we're focused in on the premium European brand. So what mm-hmm. that really means is BMW, Ducati, and Triumph. And those those are all individually owned. They're all separate companies. So BMW, as we know, Ducati is owned by Audi company, actually. Mm-hmm. And then Triumph's a, 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 a individually owned out of England. But they're all complementary to each other. And so I often had an investor ask me one time, he said, well, what, you know, who's your competition? And it sort of set me back. Wow, I mean, in reality, we have all of our competition. So if, if you drove a Mercedes car and you want a new car, what would you look at? Probably a BMW or an Audi. Well, mm-hmm. we have all those under the same roof. <laughs> so right. it's, it's pretty cool. But they complement each other. You know, Triumph is a good entry level into that premium European brand. And then you may get a Triumph and then you may also buy a BMW or also buy a Ducati because different than cars, motorcycles, you can have more than one. Tell me about, yeah, <laughs> I like that. Uh, yeah, you, you caught me at that moment. Uh, tell me about Ducati. There's there, there's there's a sexiness yeah. connected with the history of Ducati. Share with sure. share with our viewers what, what yeah. that is. Sure, David. You know, I'll, I'll go through the airport, and I'll have a beautiful BMW leather jacket on or something, and, you know, just walk through the airport. I'll go to the airport with the Ducati shirt on or something, and the, the people stop me. Do you have a Ducati? Are you a Ducati? Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. What is a Ducati? You know, they know that Italian heritage, right? It's very similar to Ferrari. 
frankly. It's right. very similar to Ferrari. And it's an aspirational brand. It's a high-end luxury brand. You know, but in motorcycles, it's achievable. So somebody that, that couldn't afford a Ferrari, they can mm -hmm. have a Ducati. And they can have that Italian feel and that sound and that look and, you know, everything about it. I, I ride a Ducati. But right. I also ride a BMW, and I also ride a Triumph. But <laughs> yeah, well, since you've got them all, you have to ride you, them all. You get it. I'm very well. fortunate. But yeah, but that it, but that Italian heritage behind that that company is really is really unique. And again, I just want to reiterate how it complements each other, right? Because a, right. a person may have a BMW adventure bike for long rides, but he may have a Ducati, you know, sport bike that he wants to you know, ride on the weekends. I mean, it just it really complements each other. Well, I know which one that I'm going to get. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was in Italy, and I was in a uh, town. I can't recall the town, but came around a corner, and there was a Ducati a cafe, coffee, yeah. if I believe. Yeah, and Bologna. they had an unbelievable uh, offering in uh, boutique of jackets and shirts and uh, different riding uh, 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 items to go with it. And it was inside, it was plush yeah. and it was big a, yeah. and plush and an experience. Right. Right. That right. was the experience. Right away. That's, that's yeah. how I got introduced and I know what I want. So I better work real hard to get ready to go get that. <laughs> you may know someone. Okay. Well, I, <laughs> yeah, I think I do. <laughs> so Tell us about what is the dream of what you're doing. And again, sure. it's obviously you're you're going into towns and bringing maybe not as sophisticated business approach, bringing these together yeah. and having it more in an experience that you have lived, you have, yeah. you're not talking about something that you haven't done yourself yeah. and making it absolutely common within the family of dealerships what is 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 the number you're looking at how what's your growth projections sure. uh, when is it that somebody that's watching this program can expect a motos america coming to their town <laughs> well it's a big question so motos america in our consolidation uh in buying these dealerships in these in these towns in these markets it is a motos america dealership but one thing that's really important Every dealership is branded for their their town, their community. So we have Triumph of Brooklyn, mm -hmm. you know, Triumph of, of Santa Monica, mm -hmm. BMW Motorcycles of Portland. And that's mm -hmm. a really important point to make because while we're the organizer of it and we're bringing it together, motorcycling is very individual. It's very personal. And we want to have that community store be a part of the community, be, be that touch and feel and be authentic, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not a corporate we, the corporate is just us helping organize that authenticity and that experience for the customer. And that's the critical piece to it. So while we have Motos Americas across the country, we always want to make sure they're community-minded dealerships. So community-minded being Triumph of Brooklyn or mm -hmm. what have you, and then a smaller, but bringing everybody together, yeah. a Motos America a dealership yep. is that, more of the brand. Yeah, that's right. And so now someone can, you know, can buy a bike from, you know, whether it's, Portland or whether it's Seattle mm -hmm. and they can ride across the country to Nashville, Tennessee, and they know that level of service that they're going to get when they go to a Motos America dealership. They understand it. In fact, they even have an app on their smartphone that gives them loyalty and gives them maps and gives them check-ins that they can now interact with Motos America on it. They can even buy their loyalty points that they bought from motorcycle and cash it in from Portland or cash it in down to Florida. Right. Pretty cool. Pretty Absolutely. cool how you can network it. And then also riding around everywhere, you know, they can maybe trade in a bike in one place and get a new one down in Daytona Beach for mm -hmm. Bike Week and then ride it home. That's what's really cool about that network. And so, David, you know, by the end of 2024, we think we'll be about 17 dealerships. Mm -hmm. you know, that's what we're lined up for. And you know, we're going to we're gonna really hone in and do those really, really well. And then there'll be more opportunities that come after that, and we want to take those opportunities, you know, uh, and make sure that they're the right fits for a uh, fit for us. But, you know, we would love to see a, a Moe's America dealership pinpointed across every, you know, not every state, but across the nation you could ride to individually. That would be great. Be cool. Now I'm going to ask you a hard, hard question. Oh, good. <laughs> what is the difference between a Euro bike mm. and what was a, a, a big in the United States, the Harley Davidson experience? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Tell me about the difference. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's actually, they're similar 
And I always tell people about what we're creating with Motos America and that you had experience in the European world and that riding. It's been done before. We're not revolutionizing anything. This is what Harley Davidson did. They took a, in the 80s, a subpar motorcycle. <laughs> right. <laughs> that leaked oil and shook and whatever else. Mm -hmm. But they made a lifestyle and a, an identity around it. And we know what that turned into. Right. I mean, it is unbelievable. And nobody went on a long ride. Not well. They would they, they would go on long ride. They're yeah, pretty. They're pretty. They would. They would take a lot of breaks. <laughs> they take a lot the, of breaks. The rear and, end couldn't handle. That's right. a long eight hour <laughs> consistent drive. They go a lot of straight rides. Right. <laughs> but in a European, so now what's happened is that Harley Davidson is that nine hundred pound gorilla. But that that client base is aging out a little bit now, mm -hmm. and they and now is with the new the new demographics coming in. They want to ride twisty turns they want to right. ride long distance they want to go maybe on a dirt road you know they want to do things a little bit differently than that that previous person they want to they want to ride with a real helmet and a real jacket not with leather you know here and a, and a uh, bandana on your head <laughs> you know they, right. it's a different persona now and that mm -hmm. market's changing and shifting and each of our manufacturers bmw ducati triumph they're poised in that market mm -hmm. they're ready to, right. to, to accept that new type of rider in well, this is an exciting time, Vance, for sure. Yeah. Now, I'm going to have to take a moment here and do a little commercial uh, break. Uh, my uh, uh, director over here and producer, uh, Nicholas Ibarra, says, make sure you don't forget, if you liked what you saw today, yeah. subscribe to our YouTube channel, yeah. Conversations with David Ibarra, and give us a like. And in closing, I also want to uh, talk about my new book. Oh, yeah. You'll see it on the screen here in a moment. Live Ready Beyond Think and Grow Rich, which, as you know, we've shared a lot yeah. of these discussions about these 10 principles of leadership and how it is to get what you want. So now that we've had our commercial break, I'll go ahead and thank you, uh, Vance, for coming on our program today. It was a pleasure talking to you. I appreciate you being my guest. Well, thank you, David, very much on all you do. And I, I can't wait. Like we say, live the passion, take the ride. And live, live ready. ready. <laughs> <laughs>